Yes, I'm actually uh, not my firm, I'm Andreas Haug. I'm from uh, eVenture Capital Partners and uh, we were early stage investors in MyFab. Stefan Zetbon is in Shanghai to fly back in order to make um, the products ready to be sent you have ordered for Christmas. So uh, he was involved there and our now new CEO, Gilles, uh, just caught a flu, so um, he's in bed. And so whenever it comes to work, the VC has to come on stage. I'm Lars Finger, I'm heading up the corporate development new media team at Auto Group um, and I'm taking care of uh, e-commerce related strategies and business development activities. So e-commerce continues to be really an interesting area of, and, and, and strong growth. You know, compared to retail, I think in, uh, in, in the US, for example, it's 7% growth in retail and whereas in uh, uh, traditional retail that is, in the online retail, uh, went up by 13%. And actually on, on Monday, Cyber Monday, they had one billion of, of sales, which was a record again. Um, so, you know, it's growing in importance and we're seeing these interesting themes um, uh, of um, socialized, you know, social shopping and customization, which hence um, uh, MyFab here today. Um, but so if we start then with, with you from, you know, Auto Group, which is a very large business, was it 10 billion in, in, in turnover, and you have some 50,000 employees. So, you know, it's, it's a very traditional business that's moving in online. But essentially, you know, online commerce has been pretty uh, static over the last, uh, you know, well, since the event of the internet. You know, there hasn't really been major changes. Uh, it's still pretty boring. There's not that much innovation. Um, do you think that this is something that we're going to see changing, you know, over the next year or so? Yeah, certainly, and I don't think that it has been boring, the whole e-commerce story, but let me probably start with uh, outlining a bit more what, what Auto Group today is, because we have been founded 60 years ago as a very small shoe uh, distance selling company, now turning into uh, really, as you said, a ten, more than 10 billion euro a group of companies, more than 123 companies in 20 countries. Uh, and we have, uh, we are certainly uh, an incumbent, but not necessarily a, a dinosaur because we have embracing very early on e-commerce and we're actually now the number one um, e-commerce player globally in fashion and lifestyle. So that is, uh, I think, an amazing story. Um, and um, I mean, what we are experiencing now with, uh, with social media, with mobile commerce, we've touched upon mobile smartphones uh, uh, earlier today. We believe that, that we are actually uh, uh, even uh, uh, experiencing more, more growth and in the end e-commerce is only 4% uh, of the overall retail market so we believe there's uh, still much more to come. But what I meant more in terms of if you, you know, walk down Bond Street, uh, there's a lot of excitement, you know, there's probably different generations walking along and it, it, it's, there's a bit of entertainment, it's a bit of excitement, you, you know, you feel brands, you smell brands, you, you know, you get a, a sort of a, a broad rela relationship with the product. That was what I'm seeing is it hasn't really happened as much online. We haven't been able to convert that kind of experience exactly. And so that's, that's what I meant in terms of the lack of innovation and making it sort of more exciting to shop online. Okay, we, we are not a pure online business, but we are really stemming from the old catalog days. And, and we also have 350 retail stores, physical retail stores, and we very much believe in, uh, in an integrated shopping experience, a multi-channel approach. Uh, where you, uh, just an example, we just launched uh, with Sportcheck, which is a leading uh, German brand of sports goods, um, a flagship store in, in Germany, which is fully uh, integrated with the catalog business, with the online business, and with the physical store, where you can check in the store, where you're direct in the store, with location-based services, where the sales guys have an iPad, where you can order things which is not available in the store. And this integrated shopping experience, we believe, is not boring at all, but, but an interesting uh, way forward. So MyFab is really working on trying to do something different in terms of changing the value chain and, and, and making things more customizable. Um, so, you know, you know, how do you see, you know, your position in terms of relative to these bigger players and, and you know, how, do you, how will you see yourself behaving and be able to take advantage of your position? You know, it's a, it's a big advantage because um, uh, you don't have to do some kind of change management within the existing structures, uh, retail chains, the, the sales channels and so on. And you can just focus on what is new, what is um, coming up with new technologies and possibilities and how can I adapt them to new business models. Yeah? So looking at digital business models, you have broadened the set of options you have, transparency, efficiency and so on, and you can create it new. You don't have to look back and don't have to carry uh, all the luggage from the past, you can look into the future. 
And that's also what uh, MyFab really makes strong, because if you would like to have a designer's um, couch, yeah, then you don't want to have a Swedish product manager telling what you have to, uh, to put into your living room, and uh, you don't have to pay high street retail rents um, for the shops. You don't want to pay uh, your salary you earned uh, for salespeople uh, working from Monday to Saturday night. You don't want to pay for products written off after the season. You just want to pay for a very good stylish product um, uh, which has a high quality and, and uh, which uh, ne fits exactly to your needs. And that's what MyFab is all focusing on it and using existing um, technology and new options uh, to do so. So um, we get at MyFab um, a broad impact or input of designers worldwide who present new products and, and if you like them you can order them and it's just produced for you and goes directly from the factory which normally produce the same high brand, very expensive um, um, uh, products um, uh, you buy normal in retail stores um, at your doorstep. Yeah, and that's at half of the prices uh, you usually, usually pay in, in retail markets. So that's an advantage. So they're basically disrupting you in, in various areas, you know, be it your value chain, being pricing, being your relationship with different suppliers and so on and so forth. You know, how, how do you respond to that? I mean, MyFab is a kind of a crowdsourcing business model where you really uh, have focused design goods and, and you specifically know what, what uh, as a customer, what you want to purchase. Uh, and this certainly is a, is a beautiful business model and it's also appealing to customers when you have a substantial discount. But on the other uh, hand, you have to wait, wait long times until the delivery finally is there. Uh, and we also believe that, that uh, Retail shopping is much about uh, being inspired by a, by a physical store. And, and, and let me bring another example, Crate and Barrel, which is an auto group company in the US and Canada, very successful one, is operating, again, a multi-channel approach to, to furniture and home accessories. And there, uh, a lot of customers just want to, want to browse the store, the catalog, see if they, if, how they how they uh, uh, buy goods for, for their new apartment. So I think that's a good business model, but it's very, very specifically focused on one specific, uh, if you know what, what you're aiming at, a designer, couch or whatever. And, and, and uh, we like that business model, but we think for larger customer segments, this inspirational mode in a multi-channel approach uh, will appeal to a much larger customer base. So your premise is, is slightly that you know, people are bored of mass market cheap products um, and that there is really a, you know, a strong trend towards this customization um, and then, you know, it's at the same time getting very affordable uh, uh, products. So, you know, what, what do you think is driving this change? Why is, why is this happening? It's uh, because uh, broadening the set of options, yeah? Um, if you look at um, people expressing themselves um, on Facebook and all platforms available, they, they like to do it and, and they do it. So um, you also express yourself with uh, the um, uh, couches you sit on, um, the dresses you wear and so on, the products you consume. And also you express yourself uh, in terms of lifestyle, how and where you buy it. And there's a lot of movements in terms of the Loha segments where you want to buy sustainable products. Yeah? And uh, if you look at the MyFab business model, for example, it's very sustainable because it's just produced what has been ordered. It's just delivered to where it should uh, go directly. It is um, efficient from a, from a point of, uh, um, uh, point of view, uh, handling resources. And so people use the broader set of options in expressing themselves and getting what they really want to get. And I think MyFab starting with uh, living and home was a very easy way to do because the margins are so high, the rents of high, sh high, high street retail shops are so high that this is a very easy thing to do things much more efficient and at the end uh, with much more possibilities to express yourself and saying, you know, this nice couch I've bought you know, directly and it was made by um, exactly for me and it's a new designer um, who's just done it uh, recently yeah? and it's not uh, out of a large corporation with a lot of product managers and optimizing different um, tasks. So, so I just wanted to ask, I mean, uh, I just it's find it interesting seeing how maybe the relationship of, of the offline stores 
might change relative to online. Do you, do you see any of those kind of trends where maybe you're, you're you, you know, you, obviously you, you use flagship stores for different things, but you know, would we look at your all, offline experience in some ways being adjusted to take into account your online experience that people want to achieve? You know, is, is that something you think can happen in the future? Yeah, surely. I mean, e-commerce is a big trend. It's growing at tremendous rates, and 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 surely the 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 offline uh, offerings have to adjust to that. So, but I, as I pointed out earlier, the whole area of of smartphones, of location-based services, mm -hmm. really having this this seamless integration of. Uh, when you're having a smartphone and you're passing by a a a, a store and and then you get a push uh, a personalized uh, location-based service dragging you into the shop, having some specific offers that's tailored around you. Of course, this requires some 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 knowledge on customer data, but but this is something again in this multi-channel experience we believe will will also change uh, the way offline stores are operated in this whole integrated approach. So. There's another thing too that I, you know I, I, the strength of Amazon again is as something pretty interesting uh, happening for sort of both of you in terms of a of a brand and, and and their ability to to you know create very cheap distribution of their products and and be able to actually create very very uh, profitable businesses where others might find it difficult to be as profitable especially so in the U.S. We don't necessarily have the same experience in in uh, in Europe. You know, what's your take on that? I mean, are we going to, again, we see this where, where you know, a dominant internet player is able to sort of swamp the other players on the market. Is, is, do you think that will happen in retail? Well, I think as we learned earlier from, from Matt is that in the, in the e-commerce, uh, uh, the 10% uh, uh, top players account for 36% of, of shopping events. So size does matter. And, and, and in Germany, we have the number two behind Amazon. So we, we clearly see that, that, uh, that size in e-commerce is important. And if we also have a look at, at the largest e-commerce uh, sites, uh, most of them are around for more than 10 years, so, so I certainly uh, agree to that. Yeah, you know, I, actually if I look at uh, digital business, uh, it's not only size that matters, yeah? And if you see, especially looking in the future, um, we see a competition of um, uh, better ideas, yeah? And if you talk about the fastest growing company ever, Groupon, we are talking a lot about uh, these days, then uh, this company didn't exist three years ago. Yeah, and um, uh, none of the big giants, even if they had fantastic um, uh, conditions to start with something like this, traditional media companies um, or the big players in e-commerce, they didn't succeed to, to start. And uh, so in my point of view, uh, and we see with MyFab uh, a tremendous development which makes us very happy and, and, and uh, prosperous for a prosperous uh, future. And I think there are so many different um, opportunities to take and the best idea will win and sometimes big companies have a very good idea and the movement to really do something new as Amazon did, as Otto did, as some other people, um, companies did, introducing new service levels. But look at Zappos, for example. Yeah, I mean, Amazon uh, was in the shoe business, but what, Emma, what Zappos could do in terms of service Amazon couldn't really live with their DNA and with their culture. So there's always every year, every month, every day maybe, the opportunity for a new, better idea to change things. And that's, uh, as I said in the beginning, it's not a matter of size, it's a matter of excellence in execution um, and a matter of creativity, combining new models, coming back to, for example, Groupon. I mean, we all had let's buy it.com and uh, we, we all had some kind of couponing activities, but combining these business models and creating something new, it's uh, a matter of creativity and then excellence of execution um, um, and working with the right people. Let, let me just add to that, it's not purely size, it's, uh, I mean, how, how did we become that large? It's because we have established uh, uh, a relationship with our customers in 60 years. Uh, we are a reliable company, we are a tr trustworthy company, we are one of the best known brands in Germany and, and globally with all these uh, group companies. 
Uh, and it's also about innovation, uh, which we have been constantly driving within the company. So we had our first uh, web store uh, on the mobile, talking about mobile smart smartphones back in 98. So, so we've been always on the forefront of innovation. And it's not purely about size. It, it's about creating customer loyalty or also all, all around, not only on the web, not only a store, also on, on delivery, being trustworthy, having a good returns policy, and also about sustainability, really taking care of, uh, of suppliers, the working conditions where we are sourcing our goods. Uh, climate is something we take very seriously. So I think that's the full package why we, we, we are where we're at. Should, should we just finish off with just final question uh, and just quickly because I think Marco's standing next to me here. I think he wants to move on to the next panel. Um, themes for 2011? What are you, look, what are you thinking about? Uh, I mean, uh, we are actually we're aiming in the next fiscal year, which ends uh, next year, at 11 billion euro revenues and f five uh, 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 billion revenues in e-commerce, and we are uh, very much uh, uh, pushing mobile initiatives and also uh, hybrid TV, all those various formats where we believe commerce will be uh, an important uh, factor. Do you want to add anything to that? Well, for my fab, it's a, a tremendous um, uh, possibilities in different markets and also to go um, enlarge uh, the assortment um, because there are a lot of inefficiencies in other assortment sectors. So um, we expect a very significant growth in terms of um, sales in existing markets in Germany and France and as well as uh, entering into new markets. And as we see that implementing businesses need less money and uh, is possible with a higher speed, um, uh, we will uh, have a very speed, uh, speedy 20, uh, 2011 and we will um, get some very, very interesting uh, new insights in what consumers want and how we can meet the expectations there. All right. Well, I'd just like to thank both panelists. Uh, thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Thanks.